whales singing in the oceans, animals communicating as we do through song. It was that discovery by Roger Payne in 1967 that would help preserve a species that was in danger of being hunted to extinction. They're inveterate composers. To sing if you are a whale is to change your song, to compose. And they make up new songs all the time, so that in any given ocean at any one time, you have a song which is particular, peculiar to that ocean. And slowly, though, it changes. And so if you go out this year and you record a bunch of sounds, you get one song. And you go, everybody's singing it. You go out the next year, it's still one song, and everybody's singing it, but it's a different song than you heard last year. It is a modification of last year's song, and after five years, the modification is so great that there's nothing left of what you heard five years ago. Payne recorded scores of whale songs and tried to get anyone and everyone to listen. I thought, these sounds are the way in. And so I just took off two years of my life, basically, and I would play these sounds to everybody I could find, poets, dancers, artists, musicians, priests, a whole series of people. I was trying to get them into the human culture because I felt that if whales were a part of the awareness of human culture, that then people would not idly just let them all die off. He had a huge impact on public perception of whales by recording the whale songs and interpreting it, individual songs, seasonal songs, and that in itself was a major contribution to conservation because it changed the perception of people about whales. National Geographic distributed 10 million song discs in one of their magazines, making whales among the most recorded artists on Earth. The Save the Whales campaign emerged, and after years of battling, the International Whaling Commission passed a moratorium on whaling, which most countries, but not all, abided by. The reason whales are killed by people is that whales are worth a lot of money. It is just makes so much money for the people who do it that it's very hard to stop. So they lie and cheat and do every dirty trick that possibly can come up, and you work your way through one trick after another in places like the International Whaling Commission. Most countries don't whale anymore, uh, although Japan pays other countries to whale, but there's a great public perception on behalf of the whales that will fight for them, and that makes it more difficult for countries to do it. Whaling always was the biggest problem that whales faced right up through the 19th century and halfway into the 20th century, and then, ah, we got better living through chemistry. Following a five and a half year study by Roger Payne and colleagues, collecting skin samples from whales around the globe, the impact of environmental toxins and heavy metals may now be the worst threat to whales. They are mammals, and therefore they nurse their young. And the substances which are most dangerous are dissolved in fats. And when a mother whale nurses her babe, she is pumping her lifetime's accumulation of toxic stuff into her baby. So what happens is you add your own lifetime's accumulation to what you got from your mother, and you pass that double dose to your baby. And that baby, if it's a female, passes a triple dose to her baby, and so on. From intentional killing via whaling to protection from industrial toxins, the battle for whales is a microcosm of the battle for environmental issues as a whole, a battle for attention and priority. 500 years from now, no one will care whether the red states or the blue states triumphed in the last election. Nothing which takes place in Washington, D.C. or in the capital of any country in the world matters in the least, except even the smallest kind of change which involves the environment. That's what matters. And yet, what, you know, what attention do we give it? Practically none. That's one of the wonderful things about the Indianapolis Prize, is that it's a step in getting attention for what really matters, not what, you know, we think matters. 500 years from now, and well beyond, one environmental victory will go on, virtually immortalized. One of the people I most admired that I got to work with as a result of this was Carl Sagan. And it was at a time when both voyagers were going up and he got a recording on both of them. And it included 60 greetings from human beings in 60 human languages. Plus, well, there was one greeting from an animal. It was a humpback whale. Whales basically have 
overcome their age-old mm -hmm. enemy human beings and are now bound on a two and a half billion year voyage that'll take them out into the rest of the galaxy. I rather like that. Mm -hmm.